Okay, you're all set. Have a good meeting. All right, so we have just exited executive session. Back into our mic. Oh, right. All right, back to our regular agenda items here, post executive session, and we are going to proceed with public comment. Seeing nobody in person and also not uh, seeing any hands raised remotely. All right, we will go forward with our student reports. Louisa Kinsley and David Murphy. Sure to share there. <laughs> Well, um, so first we have some sports and extracurricular updates. This spring, sports teams are having great seasons. Um, baseball, boys and girls lacrosse, boys and girls tennis, and track all have winning records. And boys lacrosse is also ranked third in that division, which is awesome. Um, every year there are two students chosen as Central High School Scholar Athletes for the Patriot League. And David and I were excited to find out that we were the two chosen this year. <laughs> um, and so we're going to a banquet tomorrow night for it. <laughs> Um, awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, Central High School Select Choir sang the national anthem at the Police Chief Gala at Gillette Stadium on Friday, April 12th. Um, 106 students from Central High School were inducted into the National Honor Society on Wednesday, April 24th. So congratulations to all of those students. Uh, Mr. Ayala and Mr. Barnes scheduled a lunch cruise on Saturday, April 27th for all Boston and Situate families to attend. The cruise left from Rose Wharf in Boston, and we heard it was a great time. Over 100 people were in attendance. The Situate High School Music Department performed at Disney World on April 27th. Um, we heard that the symphonic band and select choir gave a wonderful performance there, and it seemed like a great trip. Savannah Garabini and Will Hine and Bailey Young competed at the DECA National Competition in Anaheim, California from April 27th through May 1st, which is an incredible accomplishment. And many DECA students also presented at Gillette Stadium on Friday, May 3rd, on initiatives to increase revolution ticket sales. And lastly, SATs took place at Central High School on Saturday, May 4th. All right. Um, all right. Uh, so social studies teacher Kelly Traers was the recipient of the Promising Teachers Award by the Massachusetts Council for Social Studies. So a huge congratulations to Ms. Traers there, who's an excellent teacher and amazing uh, model UN supervisor. So yeah, congratulations. And we are also pleased to inform you that Louisa was selected as one of 625 semifinalists to advance to the finals of the 2024 U.S. Presidential Scholars Competition. The final selection of high school seniors who will be selected as the 2024 U.S. Presidential Scholars will be announced by the Secretary of Education sometime in mid-May. So, I guess you're having a pretty good, uh, pretty good month so far with this and the <laughs> scholar athlete thing. But yeah, congratulations. Um, the class cup event for the month of May is also continuing on, and students are guessing the baby pictures of staff members and attending the spring for the arts. Currently, the juniors still remain in the lead. The school administration celebrated all students with perfect attendance students on honor roll, and students with high honors by handing out popsicles on Thursday during wind block. So that's always fun. And our unified track team competed in Whitman Hanson and at home the past few weeks. Principal Arranger wants to say a big thank you to our AD Scott Payne, head coach Brynn Nyberg, coach Mike Timko, and other volunteers for all of their support. Situate High School's junior prom is at Venetia's in Boston on Friday, May 10th, starting with a promenade at Promenade, sorry, excuse me, at Citroen High School at 5.30. And the school administration also announced the sailors of the month for the month of March. They were John Tarsala, Cecilia Griffin, E.K. Uh, Labidea, sorry, Mr. Ranieri, Mr. Matisoff, Mrs. O'Donnell, Brooke McCarthy, and Mrs. Lokes. So congratulations to our sailors of the month. And with some guidance news, AP testing is underway and will take place at Citroen High School for the next two weeks. Best of luck to all our students as they test throughout the next two weeks. And yeah, that's about it. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thanks. All right. New business, SHS principal, Mr. Ranger, and Principal Laranja and Falcon, athletic director. So we actually have the sign right out here. So this is a new sign that would be out front at the gates uh, high school entrance and it will go into the existing space that's there now. So right now we're putting it's pegs and uh, you know with, uh, with, with, with making words of little pegs to try to create things. So this would be something that we can control uh, by our computers. Uh, automatic shut off at nine o'clock at night so it doesn't uh, uh, bother anyone with the light. Um, and it can be displayed with all kinds of town events that we're having, school events that we're having. Um, and it, you know, things can just roll through it. You can program it, I believe, right, Scott? Like a a, a week prior to whatever events happen, and they'll yeah. just roll. You yeah. can change it on an, an hourly basis. Wow. And where would this be again? Because I know right sometimes the, the DPW work is sometimes. No, so you know the existing marquee? I'm sorry, did you want to go? <laughs> you know the existing marquee that's out there now? Yeah. Open marquee? That screen fits perfectly in to that slot, so there would have to be no uh, construction done at all okay. to the marquee, just trim work to finish it off after okay. it's installed. The electricity is already there to run it. Um, yeah, and it, it does not cost much to run. The, the power, the, the power is minimal, very minimal. But there's electricity. Uh, yeah. Yes, there's very electricity. Yeah. 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 So this is this approximately the sign, right? Side? That's, that's it. the exact size. That's the exact well, yes. We could buy the demo one. What's that? Full, we can buy the full model. We can buy more or less. Yeah. <laughs> that's the exact one. That's that would be the exact size of the sign. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think Dectronix <laughs> produces the electric signs to mimic hand done signs, so it makes it easier. Great. Awesome. What we do is we need the school committee's approval to go move forward to the yeah, planning board. Just so people know. No, that's that's right. Right. So we need the school committee's approval to move forward to the planning board. So the first steps would be approval from the school committee, and then we'll go to the planning board um, with the sign. We're we'll, we'll probably not going to bring the sign to the planning board. Oh, good. Oh, yeah, we're good. Because it helps to see. Yeah. I was like, oh, I was trying to picture it. Because all I know is the sign that they park on the lawn. Yeah. You know, yeah. For announcements. Yeah, right, right now, if you go up there, there's, there's a little sign stuck on the lawn that says it's a baseball game today. You know, that would oh, be yeah. on here. Yeah. Well, he's really state of the art, really, really nice sign. Do you happen to know if um, it's. Here, sorry. Do you happen to know if this is the same type of sign that the public safety complex uses? Because they do similar. Announcements. It's, it's the same company. Same company. Okay. Yeah, the same company. Yeah. I love it. I would say you can bring the demo to the next one. You should because okay. no, like, yeah. I was kind of like, I don't really understand. And then yeah. as soon as I saw it, I was like, I get it. Okay. The fact that that sign fits in that, I would not have yeah. thought. I would have thought it would be much yeah. smaller. Yeah. And so I think that's very compelling. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Wow. And so, um, but just from a budget perspective, this was part of the maintenance or the high school gotcha. maintenance item. So essentially, we have the funds to pay for that. Yes, so we aren't asking for any additional funds. Yeah. No, okay. no additional funds. I just, I just want to add, you know, thank, thank Mark and uh, Scott for, for doing the research on this. So it's part of our overall. We talked about the high school and bringing it to life and beautifying it. And this is just one more example of, um, you know, modernizing things. And but also people come in sometimes confused, you know, where the signage is, it's not enough sign, where the entrance is, all this kind of, so, you know, this is a, a great investment, I think. But also, I, 
we like the partnership with the town where we can put a town meeting up there and work mm -hmm. together with the town where it's right across from town hall so a lot of good things it does have to go for a few more steps after this obviously to because it would have to be you know approved by some other boards but because we uh, safety piece is important too because we um our shelter was also mm -hmm. a school that was one of the reasons they approved the police and public safety building so we, i think we have that going for us as well uh, so then Okay. What's, what would the timing be, assuming you go through the, the proper approvals and so on, you know, when they would be able to install it, like end of the summer, before the school year starts? June time frame. So we would have to get approval from the planning board and the zoning board. So we'd have to get... We would need approval from the planning board and the zoning board, so I'd have to see what the timeline is with their meetings and when we could get on those agendas. and. If they, that could happen in the next month or two, this could be ready for the start of the school year in the fall. Great, thank you. Anybody else? Right. Yeah, we're really excited. It's really a huge upgrade. Yeah. Okay, we'll take a motion. Electronic sign. You look like you're ready to do it. I know, Maria looks ready. It's <laughs> point. Um, I, I will move that we approve the new electronic sign. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. I know. Keep it up. Nowhere. Perfect weather. We do not get out enough. We do not get out enough. A demo really improves us. We used by this electronic sign. Actually, that changed my whole mood in my home. All right. SHS French teacher, Mr. Jake Koga. Hello. Hello. Uh, so I'm here to request permission to continue the uh, French trip that we've been doing every two years. Um, we're not really changing anything. It would be a 10 day trip um, uh, based around April vacation. So probably a few days before, maybe a few days after instead, depending on ticket prices and scheduling. Uh, this is open to juniors and seniors uh, who take French and uh, students who are seniors who took three years of French um, have priority over upperclassmen. Uh, we're looking at 25 students, three to four chaperones. The price is, last year was 2000, or last trip was 2200, and we, we think it'll be pretty much spot on again. Uh, seven day homestay with our sister city uh, families in Sousi for about seven days, and then two days in Normandy again. This year, the French high school students might actually join and travel with us, which would be a really cool um, modification on it. And uh, we would then host the fall afterwards. So seniors who traveled would not be able to host, but it's a great way to keep interest growing uh, and going by having younger students host who haven't traveled yet. So this is the second time we'll be doing it that way, or perhaps during the summer instead of all the school year. Did you just come back from France? <laughs> no, I, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't do Shoot Shoot like that. No, that was run by um, community members like Patrick Carr and... Um, the ones that they came back today. Yeah, they literally are arriving I, in my yeah. 20 minutes. Okay, okay. <laughs> so this is separate. This is different than that. Sponsor. Yeah, this is the school one. Um, that's a school sponsor trip. So and like, that one was... They, they originally tried to have it uh, potentially as a school trip, and we said we, we can't take it on. But the community can set it okay. up. And I know that she came, uh, I think, School as well. Yes. Yeah. 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 I just thought it was like, wow, you just got off a plane. Priorities are in order. This one this seems like a just a well oiled machine that you have yeah. going with this. So I don't have any questions. No, you, you said um, juniors and seniors, correct? Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Take a motion on. Paris. I make a motion that the school committee vote to approve the Paris to see field trip. Second. Second. All right. Second by Kaminsky and all in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. 
more motions here. Um, non-union personnel job description. Superintendent Burke. Thank you, Mr. Brennellini. This position is uh, a current position that is, um, it's not a new position, it's a current position, the director of technology position, it's slightly uh, modified to include uh, the title of director of educational technology. And the major adjustment to this um, responsibility would be um, communications and information systems, which would oversee our newly formed digital comms team, the website, uh, the app, and um, all our communications that we really um, have seen grow over the last few years. We would like someone now to come in and kind of oversee and help support the vision for this. This person will also be overseeing the instructional technology pieces um, and the new position voted in our budget for the instructional technology piece, help with that uh, job description and hiring process and where that person fits into our um, vision and um, also the elementary instructional piece uh, obviously something that's come up a lot you know, will help us you know, kind of assess and audit that situation and um, give us feedback for that. So it, overall, the um, responsibilities have expanded in this role. Um, it's still the same job uh, with some with those uh, specific um, adjustments to the position to strengthen um, uh, what our needs are in the district via technology. Thank you, Superintendent Burkhead. Questions? All right, take a vote on the non union personnel job description. I make a motion to approve the non union personnel director of educational technology job description. <laughs> Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Right, and non-union personnel contracts. So this is a, um, a request. There were 11 non-union contracts negotiated uh, this year and specifically discussed in our executive session. I will list them for the community. If folks would have further questions for me, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, system principal of the high school, out of district coordinator, director of food service, information manager, athletic director, Meco bus driver monitor, excuse me, Meco bus monitor, not driver. Um, uh, superintendent's executive su uh, assistant, accounts payable and payroll position, administrative assistant to the business director, and director of supplemental services. All right. I was just say I don't know if it's worth noting that the reason we're not discussing the description or this is because we've been in an executive session talking about this. I just want folks who are watching or watching this recording not to think we're just like letting this skirt by that we had a long hour long discussion about all of this and now we're voting publicly. I just nope, thought it was important to say that. Absolutely. Thank you yeah, for noting that. <clears throat> Go ahead, Peter. <laughs> uh, I make a motion to approve the non-union personnel contracts. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, I stay. Oh yeah. Okay. So <laughs> four in favor, one abstention. Yes. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. All right. Next on the agenda. 2024-2025 student handbooks presented by building principals. While they're coming up, I just want to give a little context for the community and to the board. Um, excuse me. In the past, we had done these in the fall, in which yeah. school had already started, which seemed <laughs> odd. So um, they came up earlier in the year. Now they're back, but uh, they've done a, a great job working with their teams and their uh, school councils into. Um, Get these ready for this year so that we can go into a new year uh, with these ready to go for families and staff and students. Hi, everyone. Hello. Um, yeah, so this is super helpful because um, at the beginning of the year, we do ask parents to read our handbook and sign off on it, but then we don't have it approved until yeah. like October, November. So then parents have already been there, done that. And then you're 
try and get them to go back and read it and sign off. So, so um, as much as I, I am full transparency, I was a teeny bit grumpy when Mr. Burkhead emailed <laughs> us and said, can you please start working on these? I did send a clarifying email, do you mean next year's handbook? And, um, and he did clarify, that is exactly what he meant. <laughs> Um, but I will say, now that it's done, we feel really good. Yes. Like, we're really yes. excited that so it's right. done. <laughs> That's right. And we can get it posted, and parents can read and sign off right in the beginning of the year. So, um, so the elementary handbook, um, elementary student handbook, there's a lot there. And um, last year, we spent, well, this is my fourth year. So each year, we spent a little, some time trying to go through that and make it better, make it more readable and more user-friendly. Um, this year, we probably put in the most time we've ever done. Um, so we met, the four of us met um, four or five times for a couple hours after school, and we really went through it. And I will say, I do think there's still probably some work to do, um, but I feel like we've really come up with a good document here. One of the struggles was it was like 35 pages long, and I don't know, there aren't a lot of people that have time to sit and read 35 pages of a student elementary handbook. So we've really tried to condense it down, and um, I think we got it down to like 21 or 23 pages. Um, but you know, there's a lot of important information there. So without trying to um, you know compromise the message and the intent of the handbook, we've also tried to make it more user friendly. So the first thing we did um, was we changed the format of it. So it was all in alphabetical order by categories, and unless you you were in the mind of the person who set up those categories, it was really hard to figure out where, where things were, what they were called. So we, we reformatted the whole thing and we used subtitles, um, and I'm, I'm sure you have it and had to take a peek at that. And then we tried to group things underneath those um, subtitles. So, um, so that's the first thing we did is change the formatting. Um, the other thing we did was we added the caregiver acknowledgement statement right on the front because that is one of our biggest struggles, is getting parents to read and sign off on that. So I think two things. Helpful now that we'll have it ahead of time and we'll have it posted right when school starts, and also we put a statement right there that says you need to read this and please sign off in, in um, Aspen that you've done that. So those are the two big things. Um, and then Christine's gonna go through some of the other things we've done. Hello. So one of the biggest things that we did is we removed information that fell under specific policies or were just not applicable. So as we went through everything, we found several examples of that which we could then link to the actual policy. So some examples were the absences due to religious reasons. We have the um, section for absences with the policy, the school committee policy linked and so we were able to shorten that up a little bit. The community use of facilities was in there, but we didn't feel that's really a student handbook um, type of information, more of people trying to book using the facilities. The concussion protocol that was in there was actually for grade six and above, so not a part of the elementary anymore, now that we're K to five. The other piece was under report cards, so they had descriptions of all the letter grades and the percentages that went with that. We determined that that information is actually just sitting right on the report card, so it's there for people to see when they need it. Under school health services, there was a really long section, which was essentially the job description of the school nurse, um, so we didn't <laughs> feel that that was appropriate to have in there. Um, we removed detailed information about the special education evaluation process. So there still is a lot of detailed information in there about the special education process, but some of what was in there actually got into what questions you might be asked in a meeting, and, and that is all information that once you enter the process that they would share, the special education department would share with you. The student conduct se section was condensed to reflect essential information with the link to the more detailed policy. So as Tracy mentioned earlier, sometimes you had to find, you know, in the old handbook when it was alphabetical, things about student conduct was everywhere. It was under behavior, it was under suspensions, it was somewhere else. So we just tried to make sure everything was together logically and 
that they had the information they needed to know when they clicked on those links what they were going to find. Um, we also found there was a large amount of just redundant language. And so what we tried to do was to remove that language. We tried to, we took the first couple of lines from the policy, right from the school committee policy handle and put those under the category and then made sure we had the link. Um, some of it was just long explanations and really just didn't need to be in there. Um, the other thing we did was we aligned with Gates. We did work and collaborate with Ryan to make sure that there are some overlap, you know, so we did, um, you know, if we thought it was going to be an overlap or it might um, go against maybe something that was in the Gates handbook, we did collaborate with him on those. Um, attendance and student conduct, those were two of the big sections we collaborate on. And then we also did collaborate with some of the department heads um, because, again, those K-12 department heads are going to span all three handbooks, so we wanted to make sure that what we were saying in elementary aligned with the Gates and high school. For example, um, under the health services. So we did work with Kelly Bell to make sure that what we had under health services was in fact um, what she agreed with. And one of the big ones too was taking out that nurse's job description. <laughs> um, okay, that's all we have. Do you have any questions for us? I was I wasn't gonna ask that, I was gonna ask another. Is that okay if I go? Or yeah, you? Go ahead. Okay. So I think this looks great as someone who actually does look at this a lot. I appreciate the, the succinctness. This is super ticky tacky, but I'm wondering if there's any way in this beautiful table of contents to link so that like when, for example, if I wanted to jump right to technology, I could jump down and then there could be like a back to the beginning. I think you can, I know you can do that in Word. I don't know if you can do it in PDF, but. That's a great question. Well, it's so it's so ticky tacky, but it would just be a nice easy. Ask, if you when, didn't, when, so you it's have to posted, scroll. when it's posted on the website, you want to be able to just so like if, you know when you're scroll like if I wanted to go right to transportation instead of having to scroll, I would yeah. click on transportation. It would take me right to page fifteen. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. So a few pages. That's why I'm saying it's it's yeah. it's minor, but it would yeah, just yeah. be it's a just convenience. Yeah. I just feel like parents would appreciate caregivers. Um, no, this is great. I love the links to the policy, yes. and I don't know if it's um, because we're in the um, the extra, like looking at when I click on it, it does this like funky thing where it's just like flashing. Can you see it when sure. I clicked on policy day? I think it's inside the window. I don't know if it's because it's we're like yeah, it's masked yeah. though. Like, it, no, when I just, but then I went on switching. to. When but I then do a I can, separate link, it works. Right. If so, I just go to the, the yeah. our website, it just brings it up. But it says the same. Yeah, that's funny. I don't that know never why. happened with is us it? when we because we did try. We checked all those links. I'm sure, sure they work. work. So I don't. I think maybe it's because, because you're in the, the X drive. Yeah. That's yeah. I think that's because you have to download. We're in the X drive. That's oh, okay. I think that's yeah. Okay. If it works for you, well, then see where your obnoxious, where your test, where your obnoxious tester. Well, I was like, what's it doing? I looked at her. We're yeah. creating problems you didn't know what <laughs> <laughs> wanted. That's okay. You'd so rather solve it here, right? Well, and I only I clicked on it because it said uh, it was the the policy about interrogations. And I was like, ooh, that's <laughs> like kind of harsh, but that is she the was policy. Yeah. No, this is great. I love the links and the yeah. con concise Super to the cool. point. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, I had a question about just the process that you underwent to do the update. So uh, first of all, I love it. Thank you. It looks way better. <laughs> I think it's going to just be a lot easier for people. But I was just curious, like, it sounds like the four principals got together. I was curious who else has maybe had a hand at seeing this or like kind of understanding the changes that have been made, like teachers, and families. Yeah, so that's principals. a great question. And I, I would say it's been a couple of year process. Um, last year, I used our um, my school council to go through this last year. So I would say that was sort of the beginning of like sort of some of the major renovations. Um, and last year, we cut it down from like 40 something pages down to like 31. Um, so um, in my school council, we, we divvied up the whole book. Everyone took a section and they went home and read it and then came back and then we had a lot of great discussion about making revisions. So that was sort of a start there. And then this year, we did the same as the four principals. We took that document, we split it up 
into sections. We each read through and kind of put our um, kind of two cents into it and change it. And then we came together, the four of us, and we went through every single section together. So it's it was interesting because it's some of the things were like, well, who makes that decision? Like, is that for us to make here? You know, and and honestly, there were times I was kind of like, I almost like to see what school committee thinks of this or like. Um, you know, that's where we like collaborate too with like Ryan and, and, and Kelly Bell. And um, we did collaborate um, a little bit with teachers, probably not as much as maybe we should. I would say that would be a great step as well as to have it, um, teachers look at it. Um, so, and then also even some, um, there were some questions we had at times about like, well, should, does, it, does this belong in the handbook? Is this the place for it? Should it be someplace else? Or do we have it in multiple places? Should we have it in multiple places? Like there, we still did have questions as we yeah. went through it. Yeah. Um, so it was it was a great process. We spent a lot of time and had a lot of good discussion. We we all feel way more educated about the policies in the school committee handbook <laughs> because we've had <laughs> to dive in. Yeah. <laughs> we did do a deep dive into those policies and we learned some stuff. We absolutely learned some things that we were like, wow. Um, we didn't realize that, you know, so, um, so it was a good process. Yeah, with your enthusiasm, Tracy. Oh, <laughs> Julie, oh, that's right. Julie Ward, Julie Ward spent a lot of time with us as well. Yeah. So. I was going to say a couple things. I think as a member of the policy subcommittee, if you found policies in the bigger thing that you now have questions about or are curious about, if you'd love to flag those, we would love to take a look at them. We're kind of always in a, a process of going through and trying to figure out what needs updating. Yeah. Um, so if there's anything that springs to mind, if you want to note it down and let us know, that would mm -hmm. actually be really helpful because there is an awful lot in there. And so it's hard to know what needs to get updated. Mm -hmm. um, and I was just curious about, um, did anything like, content wise change or is it mostly just organization I, I guess i'm asking because i'm wondering what then would be the process for helping families who maybe have, are like oh yeah yeah i've seen this form assign this um <laughs> helping them to realize no there are things that you should read or you know there, this part has been updated in particular um, next fall i think one of the things that we've been working on this year is the attendance policy and making sure that that has been updated, so I do think that is something that um, parents should be directed to yeah. as a change. Yeah. So that that's the only one that I can think of. I think that was the biggest one. Yeah, that's the one I was wondering about actually, and I couldn't remember if I just was misremembering this, but there was I thought the piece about like whether or not or, or the fact that teachers are not expected to give um, homework ahead of time. I think that's new. I don't, is that not new? Yeah, okay. That is not new. I was going to say, that's one that doesn't seem like people know. Because <laughs> I think a lot of parents are like, oh, well, I'll just write an email and I'll ask the teacher for a packet. You know, that's a very common practice. Um, and so I was wondering, I didn't, wasn't sure if that was new or not, but that seems like something. No, that so that happens to a lot of families. And, and I'll tell you, um, that does come up when we're talking with families, especially families that are doing a planned vacation outside of the school vacation times. Okay. And um, I know I have several times had to cut and paste from the handbook, and I just give them that language. And what's a struggle in the elementary school is um, teachers always want to do right by their students, mm -hmm. right? So what, what gets tricky is when we have some teachers who want to do that, and do it, and others who follow the, the guidelines of the handbook. So, so I know we've had a lot of conversations at Wampatuck about that, and that understanding that this is our handbook, and this is what parents have signed off on, and we need to all adhere to that. But I, we do run into that, because it is easier for us, for teachers, if kids come back with that information under their belt, right? Because then they're, especially if they've been out for a week or two, now they're trying to make up that so it, it's a very tricky situation, but but that has been in the handbook at least in the four years I've been here. It kind of segues to the absence and, um, in the under school oh absences and dismissals. It mentions um, taking like the prescription, like the antibiotic, for like twenty four hours before coming back. But there's no nothing in it, and it mentions the temperature of 100 degrees, like don't come into school, but there's no language in there about um, returning to school that uh, if if you don't have a temperature without without Tylenol or, you know, 
That's in here somewhere. Is it, is it under health somewhere? services? It might be you know, under, it might be under wellness. Is it under wellness? Under wellness? Yeah. Well, under the policy. Wellness. Yeah, I'm looking under wellness because it has app, it has wellness, school health, absences, absence and dismissals. Okay, I'll just hold down there. I would have to check. I don't know if we removed that or it just hadn't been there. Um, and we did consult with Kelly Val on that to make sure that we have the right thing. Yeah. I mean, and it could be in one of the I policies just, that, you're, that, that you're linked to one of the mask policies that details. But I, I bring it up because you mentioned like the antibiotic, and I think something like if your child has a temperature. But doesn't with Tylenol. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, oh, you know what? That's, that's fair. You know yes, what I mean? I know what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Like they, if they don't have a temperature and you haven't given them Tylenol or something, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then you can send we them. We do to whatever school. we can to get them back to school. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. Get some Tylenol. Get on the bus. Yeah. So um, I, I don't know if you want to ask Kelly. We, we yeah. can definitely yeah. take a look at that again before we get it up on the website. Yeah. Just definitely. because it's like that, it has mentions the antibiotic. So right. I'm like, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. The line about the fever reducing medications is in the attendance policy. Okay, but it's not here. So okay. maybe you can just put it in both okay. places. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we can yeah. definitely do that. Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I knew it's not somewhere. Yes. 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 I I just somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's number two. It's number two. Yeah. Okay. okay. I just have a quick comment. Um, first of all, th this is great. I mean, I I don't maybe Carrie. I don't I don't remember if I've ever read the handbook and what yeah. kids are through elementary school. So appreciate the effort. Look, it, look, it does look good. It's like it's up to date. I feel like the other one was just mm -hmm. a template from like 1980 or something. So this is great. Um, and I think that I know this, but so for parents to claim that they've read it, they go to Aspen and they just click. They, there's a link to the to this handbook that, and then you click on and say that you read it and acknowledge it. That's, That's how it works. Yep. And every family has to acknowledge that they're they supposed it. to. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that's great. Um, we have this again, this is just like formatting stuff, which I'm sure someone will pick up, but on a lot of these, it has like the, the title of the section and then it has a semicolon and then the policy, but some of them are missing the semicolon. So whatever that is, I don't know if the semicolon is the right punctuation or what I just, at first glance, I didn't, I love the fact that it lists the policy, but I don't love that there's no punctuation in between it. So I'm not sure if it's punctuation or separate line or what, but I like it all. It just doesn't look right. We are happy to add a semicolon. <laughs> no, colon. Oh, excuse me. We're happy to add a colon. Some of them have a colon. That's the only reason I mentioned that. Yeah, so, and we, Let's look at page 10. we going down. also, the first oh, yeah. several I said okay. pages did not have. Yeah. Not and then we started adding. Yeah, so, so I thought we must have started to get really tired. I like the but we took a break and we came back and then we were distracted. <laughs> and then we're like, we gotta add bullets. So yeah. no, we'll we'll fix that. As I don't well. again, I don't know what the function is. I love that there's a link to the policy there. Yeah. And if colon is right, then use colon, whoever wants to. Okay, we can definitely do that. Yeah, that looks great. <laughs> But no, thank you for this. It's, yeah. I know it's not that much fun, but you had a whole new year now to worry about. We do. We learned a lot. We learned a lot, and we will have some suggestions for school committee yeah, policies. Yeah, we, we would love to deep hear. dive. Yeah, <laughs> it's really important, it's, and, and that's, it's tricky to write a policy. Like it's harder yeah. than you would think, and that's part of the reason I asked about the process, just because when we do this, we have the first reading, the second reading, and we have all these eyes on it, and so often you miss little things like that are contradictory or that like <laughs> this one place and not the other place, and it's just, it's it's harder than it's colons. So, yeah, colons. Yes. Yes. <laughs> when, when you think you found everything. Right. Yeah. You're missing right. a colon. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you knew we were gonna have those. So. Yeah. 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 Wasn't one of them. No, no, that did not. That was not one of the things we thought of. Oh, thank All right, you. thank you. Thank you. Next up, Mr. Beatty. You get yours down to twenty-one pages. That's what I my question is. 
Cut, cut, cut. <laughs> so yes, so uh, very similar to Principal Sheehan and uh, Principal Grid, and I was very excited to get the invitation from Superintendent Burkhead to edit our panels. Yes, but uh, again, similar, right. <laughs> similar to, uh, to my colleagues, uh, we are in a really good place uh, in the sense of having been able to look through this at a time when it's not very chaotic. Um, and our process was we worked with our school council, uh, which has teacher reps, community representative, parent representative, uh, and together we looked at our existing handbook, came together and made some recommendations and had for discussion around some of the big things um, that are included in our handbook. So just from our executive summary, um, page six through eight, just some updated staffing to reflect our staff that we know of for next year, as well as dates and um, trimester dates, report card publication and all that. Uh, we included on page nine the new attendance policy uh, that includes language around verified and unverified um, as opposed to excused versus unexcused. And I think to your question to my colleagues of what's something we need to educate parents and community about, I think it is this policy yeah. um, in the sense of, although it might just be a, a coding issue in Aspen, um, we're trying to change yeah. that mentality of, you know, when you are in school, you're present. Um, when you're not in school, for whatever reason, um, you're not here and you're missing instruction. So I think that's one thing that we as a school, um, as a district across the board, would like to kind of promote as we go into the next school year. Um, on page 12, uh, we went through our infractions and removed unacceptable social behavior uh, because we found that to be vague and everything else was very specific. Um, and that might mean something to one person and not mean it to another, so we want to be as concrete as we can. We updated our dress code on page 19. Thankfully, our students offer a lot of advice um, specifically around uh, their civic action project, and there's always one or two groups that looks at the dress code, which is great because um, their voice and their feedback is something they care about. Um, and if you look at how our dress code has you know, transformed over the last you know, six to 10 years, um, very inclusive language does not necessarily target one gender or another. Um, but there was a statement that's been in there for a while about hairstyling, and it was less about like how you can wear your hair. It was more a statement about the courts have ruled that schools, um, you know, do have some form of uh, way to regulate how students wear their hair. Um, and so we did take that out. We will educate students if there ever becomes a problem with hairstyles, um, but. I think that was the, the piece in there that our students really were concerned about that we didn't have much answers to or experience with, um, but there is, I guess, uh, there, there are court cases um, around hairstyling and um, the school's ability to do that. So we took that out um, and we'll continue to have good hair and all that. Um, we updated health services uh, with Nurse Kelly Bell in 2022. Um, this year we, we adjusted um, our requirements for National Junior Honor Society to align with those at the high school. Uh, for National Junior Honor Society, it used to be a 3.6 grade point average, and we have increased that to a 3.8. Um, we find that uh, students are motivated by the ability to be inducted in, um, and we find more and more students with certain grade point averages, and so we figured that would be a better cutoff to align with our high school. Colleagues, uh, we also added in a piece about attendance and discipline into National Junior Honor Society um, that those will be factors considered into it because as of right now, um, discipline is not necessarily um, a, you know, something that can be considered. It's not saying that students with a discipline record would be disqualified, um, but that's something that we should be looking at that, that the high school also looks like in theirs. Um, and on page 25, uh, the idea of artificial intelligence, we don't have a, a policy or, a, or anything about artificial intelligence. We're still learning about it. Our students are learning about it. Our teachers are learning about it. We did just add it as a piece to our plagiarism that um, we expect students to generate their own work, use their own ideas. Um, and as we continue to learn how to responsibly use and, and teach with artificial intelligence, um, I'm sure policy will out of that in some way, shape, or form. Finally, we updated the pronouns. Um, everything was he, she, and we added they, them, there um, to be inclusive. So that was the gist of our summary. Um, and 
wanted to thank just our school council because they did spend a lot of time uh, offering and having good discussions around these topics. Thank you. Thank you. Middle school handbook. I just have the same request about the being able to click through the table. Yes. Handbook, but yes. It's very minor. It looks great. It looks like mm -hmm. you went without the colon. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I've seen Mr. Gates over there with his glasses down. So, uh, it's either all or nothing. There's parentheses. The parentheses. Uh, yeah, it's I, a different, like different, different approach. I think I like the parentheses. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be inclusive. We will update that. I think I like the parentheses. <laughs> Cleaner. So the highlighted portions are changes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. No wonder. Yeah, it's nice. Looks good. It does look good. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. Thank you. 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 I was going to bring up that. So no, you can so no. Come on. I look at Universal. Mm -hmm. What? Not the sales. The All right. Well, thank you for having me tonight. Our first change, just page one, we just changed the date 2024 25. On page nine, we changed our uh, mentor director to Mr. Sean Ayala. Page 19, um, cafeteria, to sign out of the cafeteria now, we, we have a, um, they have to sign out, they're supposed to remain in the cafeteria and they go into another do, uh, destination, we have a QR code now they sign out to, so we know where they're on. That's more or less for parent calls and, and, and they're supposed to be in the cafeteria, we know well, the QR code, what, what area they are in the building. Um, our anchor block on page 19, anchor blocks are now for seniors only, so we took juniors out of there. On page 21 for restrooms, um, cell phones or other electronic devices should not be used in the restroom. So we're going to, I'm gonna go over that a little bit later, but we have a new cell phone policy um, and they cannot take the cell phone out of the pockets when they leave the classroom to go into the bathrooms. Page 21, student parking. This is a mess last year. I, there are a lot of student parking issues. So seniors with a valid driver's license can receive the first parking spot. So they have to have a driving license in order to in order to go for it, uh, for a parking spot. And then all other spots will be decided by lottery. And this year, I think we'll be in a better shape because last year we had a high senior class. So numbers will be a little bit less. We should be in a better position for the parking spots. On page 23, student support sports, we got rid of AMP2 and Harbor Academy because it no longer exists. On page 35, for classroom communication, we changed appropriate grade administrator to department chair. So the department chair will be the first uh, uh, person, like me, the second person that has contacted um, any classroom communication issues. And then it'll go administrator after that. On page 47 and 48, under eligibility requirements, we are changing our policy to two Fs or more, and you're ineligible for athletics. Right now, we have a policy where we follow the MIA rules, where if you pass four classes, you can participate in athletics, and we, we carry seven, so they could literally fail three classes and play athletics. So, so we've made it um, more difficult, um, and I still think it's fair. And then we have a policy also, we call it our um, AMP policy, that's AMP 1 policy, and that if a student has, uh, must have five C minuses or better, or they go into the AMP program, and the AMP program is some extra help that they receive during wind block, and if they do not attend the AMP program, then they can't play sports or be part of the band or whatever their extra activity is. So it just gives students extra support who are struggling academically. Um, our 
Big one is the cell phone policy, um, which you know, on page 66, we're changing the wording and went to a no uh, cell phone use in classrooms. So we're going to have pockets for all staff, and and then uh, the students are going to be asked to put their phones in the pockets while instruction is going on. And when the class is over, they can take their phones and, and, and head off to their next class. And that's where that piece where the with the um, bathroom restrooms comes in because they're not going to be allowed to take their phone and go to the bathroom with it. Uh, I did some reading over the actually last night. I was reading, and it was I believe seventy seven percent of Massachusetts schools are now going to a no cell phone policy in the classroom. Yeah. yeah. So we're we're, we're piggybacking on that. It's going to be um, Gates does it now in the ninth grade, so even our incoming ninth graders are going to be used to it. And then the sophomores, juniors, and seniors, we're going to send notification home, and we're going to be pretty strict with it. One of, the, one of the good things about the cell phone policy, I have a lot of teachers have asked me this, and we've involved them in, in these decisions. And, you know, they're not going to be, the teachers are not going to be the ones that take the phones away or all that. It's going to be done by the administration. So if a student has their phone out, the first time they have it out, they're simply going to be asked to put it away. If they refuse to put it away, then it's going to go to us. They're, they're, I'm not going to ask them to take phones and I give kids in classes. Just let us know that that's occurring and we'll come up and we'll deal with that. Uh, and then we have a policy, first offense, second offense, third offense, fourth offense for the, for the uh, cell phone infractions. We've got great kids. I don't foresee a lot of hassles going on. Most of the kids, if you ask them to do something, that they're, they're really respectful kids. I don't, I don't see a lot of that going on. But, but if it does, the teachers aren't going to have to deal with it. We're going to deal with it. Sean, do, do you, uh, so sometimes when teachers have the kids use the phones to access, you know, look, Look up such and such a you know easy internet to use them. Will they just be logically using their Chromebooks for those things now? Yeah. If not that's what my son is Yeah. See, we have issued uh, school issued Chromebooks now, so they they right. have a great problem. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Some teachers already have this no cell phone policy in the classroom. Is that it, it is. As I I would say probably twenty percent of our yeah. teachers right now are doing it right now. Yeah. Yeah. So you have some good models anyway. Too. Yeah, we do. I had a question about when you said leaving the cafeteria, there's a QR code. Does that mean that they scan that with their phone? Yes. Yeah, so what was happening in the first couple of weeks of school, kids were grabbing their lunch and going to different areas of the building. We have a food court outside of the yeah. seniors, we have a senior calf. Uh, so just keep track of where kids are going. I was literally like, well, where's everybody going? And, and they're, in a, they're in a place, you know, they're not... They're not leaving and going. They're, they're in a place, but I didn't know where those. So now the QR code is like four different areas they can go and eat, eat lunch at, and, and that's more or less if a parent calls us and says, right. "Hey, we're looking for somebody," and, and oh, they're in the cab, and we don't see the cab, we just look at the QR code, find out where they are. I was just curious because that means that a hundred percent of kids carry phones. Yeah. Yeah, just yeah. about. Yeah. yeah. I like that though. That feels like a, a safety, a layer of safety thing. Yeah. yeah. You know where people are. Yeah. Even though you know they're here, you don't know. Mm -hmm. We've actually had to use it. Yeah, we've them. actually had to go to it and say, oh boy, they were, they're having lunch and they see a gap. Yeah. So it's been fine. The good use of technology for a good reason. Yeah. I've got a couple of questions. Um, regarding the eligibility requirements and the two Fs or more, it, are those specific? Like, do those refer to core classes or? Any course. Any course. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if they're taking seven, if they feel their second half, they're ineligible. Okay. Um, and regarding the senior parking, I know this comes up. Uh, parking is tough. And you said in, anybody with a valid license, but there might be those seniors that get their license. Maybe they get it later after school starts, or it's probably a few fewer seniors, but. Yeah, yeah, most of them will have it. Most of them, but you're yeah. right. There will be a, a small portion that don't have it. A lot of times spots open up and that mm -hmm. would go to those seniors first. So seniors are gonna have first kids at parking. You know, it's only it's only fair their seniors, they should have right. a, a spot on campus. Um, but we're not gonna uh, let them enter into the parking policy as a part of the if they don't have their license, they have to have their license. So if if there was a, a, a a case where a senior wasn't going to have their license until after school started, could they go to you or somebody? And yes, say, Michelle's going to keep a list of those seniors. So let's say it's, it's the middle of September, yeah. then they're, we're going to say this one. Okay. They'll have a spot. Yeah, that's only fair. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a question. It wasn't in one of your highlights. I'm actually just more curious now that we're going to do this. Can you, um, 
Can you talk a little bit about the bait detectors? Do we really have those? Yeah. yeah. That work? I'm, just, I'm just curious more than anything. It's, it's not, it's, I know it's not part of any change, I'm just curious. Yeah, we have the bait detectors. Um, and I mean, they don't go off as many times as you think they do, but when they go off, the administrator can run up there and, and see who's in that bathroom. Not every bathroom has them either. Okay. Um, but, you know, and then, and then they can see that. But typically, there's a, there's a pause in between it. By the time you get up there, there might be three kids in there, and, you know, the person that might be, might be you know, the, the, the best way to control the bathing is we do bathroom checks. And if you do bathroom checks and you see a kid bathing, then, then, then you know it's right there. I find that to be more effective just to do bathroom checks from time to time. Okay. We don't have a major, major problem though right now in high school. At least when I catch them. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> I mean, we, you know, it's, I, I, kind of, I was in other districts where it was a lot more vaping than we were having here. You know, in the so we think. Yeah. <laughs> so we hope. Yeah. 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 I, just, I, I do want to comment that. Um, Bait detectors too. They, they have a lot of false positives too with perfume, cologne, other aerosols. So I know the districts that that's why we haven't gone all in on continuing to fill the rest of the bathroom. So it's it, it's more of a cultural thing, educating the kids, maybe not having the phones because it's a way hey, I'll meet you in the bathroom. Usually in groups they do that. So I think the no cell phone policy will also help with that. Visibility is a huge thing. Um, yeah, being, being in the hallways and, and checking bathrooms is probably the best way to to, to see that. You know, and, and it prevents kids from doing it if they know you're popping in and out. I mean, today I popped open like four or five doors, you know, everything was good, but if they know you're doing it, so they, you know, they tend to make better decisions, I think. I was curious about the process. So it, when we were looking at the other handbooks, we saw links to policies, and it looks like you and your group decided to include the long policies in the handbook. So it's an 83 page handbook. I'm just curious what were sort of the discussions around whether to link out to policies versus having extensive like bullying and cyberbullying policies right in the handbook. I'm just curious. We really didn't discuss it that much to okay. be honest with you, but I mean, this summer I'd like to get my team together and go through it again, because it is wordy. It's, it's a big handbook and it's wordy and, and we could condense some things into, you know, it, it could, you, you, different codes and things. So we're, we're gonna take a look at that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Now, that was really just Superintendent Brookhead. When will we see? Do we, we vote on the handbooks? School committee votes on them? I can't remember if that's one of those. We have voted. We have in the past. Do we? Yes, we can be voting on them. Not we'll put it on the next agenda okay. just to give you time time to digest. Could have had it tonight, I guess. But yeah, I was gonna say if they want to look at, it, I mean, I like the links. I love how the elementary yeah, is doing right. that. It feels consistent. Right. Happy to give them time on that if that's what they need. It doesn't have to be next meeting. If everyone agrees. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. All right. Leadership reports. Director of Human Resources, Taisha Cooper. Welcome, welcome. I am going to pull up my presentation for y'all. Excellent. Well, well Ms. Fluke is doing that. I, I forgot to mention during my short time that I spoke tonight. Just, I just wanted to. Uh, Thank the uh, the community that showed up on uh, the last special town meeting. Um, from what I hear, it was one of the biggest turnouts in, in recent memory, and I'm just so proud and excited of that alone. That there was that many people uh, that gave up uh, an evening, several hours, to come in and talk about, and learn about, and discuss and vote on the new building project. So I want to thank them. I want to thank the committee for being uh, stalwart in your support. Transparency, uh, and just to remind the community also that there's another big vote on May 18th that we, you know, need to go out there and vote, and, and, and to also uh, continue to send questions to me or to the committee. Uh, we've received a lot, and we've gotten back to folks. So I just wanted to keep that coming because we want the, um, the community to be educated on the vote and to understand and um, 
have every single question answered. So we're still very open to that right up until the 18th. I know there's early voting as well, so all that going on. But just to, I just want to thank the community for um, a great show of, of civic unity. And, and uh, no matter what your thought was on on your vote, I just thought there was a very respectful, um, courteous debate on the topic. And that's, that's a great sign of a strong community. So thank you all. Thank you. First off, I want to thank uh, the school committee and Superintendent Burke for the opportunity to uh, share an overview of some of the fun work that I've been doing um, in my now seventh month here in Sidgwood. Um, so today's presentation is going to be about the time that I've spent here since October. Um, I mentioned that this is the seventh month. I'm going to go over some entry findings and what things that I've done and put in place to um, of corrective action for those things. Um, I'm going to also show you what our um, Situate Schools um, school Spring web page looks like, um, talk a little bit about the BSU Education Career Fair that I attended recently, um, give you a little um, information about some SVS publicity that I, was, I had the opportunity um, to uh, attend at Burkett and myself had the opportunity to be a part of, which is really cool, and just give you a little overview of some of the things that I'm thinking about for next steps as I continue to um, build on the foundation of our human resource department. We'll leave some time for questioning. So some of the things that um, I have um, found is when starting our school spring that we had was one of the oldest version, versions that they had. And so I spent time um, from October until March implementing their um, enhanced school spring um, module that they have, as well as their applicant tracking module. Uh, what this has done is it's helped, it will help um, streamline the hiring process by making time, making it more efficient for our hiring managers on the backside, but as well, um, and I'll show you when I show you a screenshot of what the website looks like, our own very own um, situated school spring website, it is it will allow our internal applicants for any like, when they apply for clubs and advisories or coaching when they're already employees, they really can apply with three clicks. So it saves time. So we're working through that right now. Um, and then there's been several processes that I've moved from paper to electronic, just to give you some of the, the quick ones that I've done. Well, not quick, but some of the ones that are like really huge <laughs> that have saved a lot of time. And I've gotten good feedback about them being helpful is I built a hiring staffing info tracker. And so, so in the background, when you're hiring, you think, oh, HR just hires people, but I don't do it on my own. I, there's a team of people together. So our director of data, our technology team, they all have pieces in when a hire gets processed so that they can get access to the various systems. So now we all have a document that's living and breathing that we all can look at. As soon as I put them on, the, uh, a new hire on the document and give them the information that they need, they're able to all go and branch off and do their other things. To give an example in technology, when someone was hired, Bonnie would have to send an email tech ticket just to get the technology started. Right now, we all work off that one document. Um, and it's been helpful. We've, we've morphed it and like worked together to like add and change things to make sure that we're continuously having something that's efficient, that's um, working for the team. Um, something that I built for the hiring managers and our principals um, based off of that spreadsheet, I've used a formula to pull data that they need into a hiring and onboarding tracker. So when their person shows up there, they know that they're ready to go in their building. So that's their instant notification that they've done everything they needed to do and that everybody who needs to know about them knows that their person should be able to walk through the door ready to, um, to step in front of the kids or do whatever they need to do, whether they're coaching or not. And then a very simple one, but helpful for me is our reimbursement receipts. Um, coming in, they were all being sent via email. So that can easily be lost. Like even right now, I have people emailing me saying, hey, I emailed Bonnie this in August while I wasn't here. So um, I, I, I made a Google form for reimbur SBS reimbursements and asked them to upload them there. It just helps me keep everything in a centralized location so that when it's time for me to process them at the end of the year, I can have all the information. And if I'm missing anything, I know who to go to and where I need to go for that. Um, I've also created an SBS exit survey um, what that is, is, it is a Google form that they can fill out, but at the end, they also have the ability to request a meeting with me to go through that. So if they request a meeting, I don't read it so that I just have like, so I'm empty slate so they can come in and tell me what they need. But if not, I'm able to read that and then report back to Superintendent Burkhead about any like flags that have come up in that. 
Um, another thing with that is it allows me in that letter that I sent to them to give them the COBRA information and the unemployment pamphlet all in one. Um, we obviously don't do that if there's a termination or anything like that. We handle that separately in a different letter, but this just encompasses it all together and just make sure that we're in compliance with all the things that we need to be with. Um, and then lastly, I know you've gotten an update about MTRS, but I just wanted to share that that is something that we're working on and that we, Cindy and I have done a lot of work with our rep. So as of January 2024, our backlog um, dated back to November 2022. And so what that means, there's two parts. There is report there's submissions of MTRS reports that we have to submit to MTRS and then we have to work with our rep to reconcile. So right now we are up to date. I will be sending the April one now that we've closed out all of April soon of submissions. The next step is for sending I to schedule those meetings with our rep so that we can start reconciling. We are officially reconciled all the way through 2022 now. And then we now have to catch up with 2023 and then jump into 2024. But I believe, I haven't seen the data, but based on the emails that they sent us, that we're like ahead of the game um, with the districts that have been behind since the pandemic. This is um, just to show you what our website looks like. It's sit.schoolspring.com. And a few things I just wanted to point out. I was able to pull a picture approved. Uh, it has our um, situate lighthouse. Um, I'll point out the number two is our tab for internal jobs. So when employees log in and they click that tab, that's every job that's there that they can apply for, that allows them a three-click application. Verifying their name is correct, verifying their resume and cover letter is there, and then signing off with their initials. It's that simple and quick, which allows then our hiring managers to, to submit them to me to say I want to hire them, which is a, a huge deal because prior to this system, we had paper recommendation forms, and they would print out the whole school spring, school spring packet, send me that, and the recommendation form. So now everything tracks with the applicant in the system, and also when hiring managers are like they're able to see each other's notes or whatnot. So we're able to just communicate and not have to print out so much paper, and it will be in the system here. So just wanted to point that out. Another cool feature by upgrading their school spring website and getting our own situate website. We, the map is only for situate. So you'll see where the three is. It's really tiny, but everywhere we post a job and we say the location, it shows the applicant where the job is actually located. So there's 15 here, that's like coaching jobs and a few jobs at Gates in the high school. But then you'll see how they're on there and things. So all, anywhere we post a job, they'll get a little bubble and they can click and see exactly where our school location is. So it's a pretty cool updated feature. Some of the fun that I've also been able to have is May 1st, I attended the BSU um, Education Career Fair. Um, as you can see, I um, took a picture of the table. Uh, something I actually enjoy doing going to career fairs, just setting up all the swag, walking around, <laughs> meeting with um, my fellow peers to see like what kind of swag they have. So um, we have the little notebooks, and I'll have to bring you some so you can see them. But I was able to be help me. We were I was able to um, personalize little notebooks with pens, and then we have situate pens. And so like a few of my peers were like, oh, can I take one of those so I can order them? So we had some good discussions. And I saw a few things that I would like to get for us as I continue to represent Situate at these type of events. Um, a few things that I will point out, it was a great opportunity to talk about the lit work we're doing. I think it sets us apart. No, everyone, when, as soon as I said love, it was like, oh, really? And there was a couple people that were like super excited just for the opportunity to apply here, whether it was subbing or just like to, if they were graduating, I think they were graduating this weekend. Um, and then some were just like, I'm not graduating yet, but I'm looking this up. And they were really, really excited. I felt like I was excited to meet them, but they were also excited once they got to learn about that. And you, for me, it was a shocker, but there were a lot of people that never heard that call. So it was a great opportunity. I had some of our MECO one pages, one pagers with me, and I was able to pass that information out and just talk briefly about MECO. Um, so I know in the future, I'll probably be tag teaming and pairing up with our MECO leadership to come to those events with me because I didn't realize just how many people never have heard of Metco. So that was pretty cool. Unless you're in a district yeah. that, that has sense. it, you wouldn't know. Yeah. I think I've just been fortunate to just be involved in and be around yeah. districts that have it. So I just thought it was a known thing. So um, it was a cool opportunity for me to like to find that out so now I can plan accordingly as I attend these events. And overall, it was just like a really great experience. So um, thank you to Superintendent Burkett for allowing me to go. Um, and I look forward to continuing that with them and then um, other 
um, events as well. So to the SBS publicity, um, little fun fact, I thought I was grown when that picture was taken. <laughs> I know now that I am grown now. <laughs> um, so just a little bit behind how this took place. Um, I got a random email from um, Jack Church. He happens to be the assistant editor for the Daily Beacon that writes for the Lady Ball. So I know Bill has shared that I play basketball professionally while I went to the University of Tennessee and played for the famous Fab Summit. And when Jack was doing research for his next serve, um, his next story, he said that he saw that I was a situate. He just happened to grow in Marshville. Mm -hmm. So he, he um, emailed me and the editor that was working there when I played is still there. So he cc her on the email, he emailed me. And so she piggybacked on it and was like, hey, I vouch for him or whatnot. We were supposed to meet in person. I, I did ask for permission to um, go ahead and do the interview um, just because he, he wanted to do it and I was you know, here. Um, and I happened to be sick, so we had to do it virtually, but I um, didn't get the opportunity to meet him in person. But after we talked and he just really, he wanted to know like how I ended up here and like what my thoughts were. And I did put a little excerpt here from it just to show like, you know, we put another way of, you know, all publicity, you know, for um, situated yeah. public schools, just to talk about the district a little bit. And then some of the kind words that Superintendent Burkett had to say about me um, really touched me. I was like, I scrolled down the whole um, <laughs> just to get to that part, uh, and then I regret it. <laughs> but you know, it, it's great um, to be able to show even our students that are seeing it, like the connection with um, academics and sports, and like you can make it, and they can see me in this role and, and being able to be a role model. So you know, after being a role model playing professionally, I thought those days were kind of over besides for my kids, but to be able to have this opportunity kind of just brought all those feelings back up. So just wanted to share that with you guys. Um, yeah, that's great. Hey. And then some next steps. So uh, my next big project is tackling our new hire onboarding. And what I mean is the actual documents that people sign. Um, they fill out, you know, IDs, I-9s, um, tax forms. Right now it's paper. I'm looking at converting that as well to electronic. Um, and so my hopes are with that to also integrate, because I've started meeting part of the strategic plan is into making sure we have diversity in our hiring. I've been meeting with um, Jamil and um, we have been like looking through the um, lit and medical documentation that I can insert. And you know, some, when you when you start, I don't I some people don't have to apply for a job, but when you go in, they give you the policy that you sign up on. We, I want to insert that information in so that we are like, I'm not only just talking to them about it when I'm like having them both give me their IDs or whatnot, but also like so they can actually see and I can, you know, sign off that they've seen and they know what the work we are that we're doing here that we're committed to in the district. Um, I'll, utilizing our new membership with um, MPDE, which is the Massachusetts Partnership for Diversity and Education. I recently uh, was able to join for Situate. Um, we did miss their um, their job career fair they just had recently. We joined like the week that they were having it and it just didn't work out scheduling wise. But this is just a little information about it. They're a recruiting group of Massachusetts public school districts whose mission is to not only locate outstanding candidates of color, uh, but to also provide resources and supports towards the development and overall increase of educators of color. So we're really excited to be a part of this group and find out what it can do, um, what we can learn from the group by networking um, and utilizing their events. So they do have career fairs, they have conferences, um, and they have monthly networking meetings. So um, Jamil and I will tag team, sometimes we'll be able to go together, but based on our schedules, we'll make sure that we have representation, representation so that we can really utilize that membership um, with um, MPDE. And lastly, just piggybacking on the NTRS update that I gave you, just really making sure that Cindy and I work with our rep to reconcile those reports so that we can like, you know, brag a little bit and say, like, you know, since what is done, since what is done today. <laughs> um, but not only that, um, the real personal human side of it is our teachers who log in and can't see their real balancers or can't see their updated information. So being able to say, hey, we did the work so that you can um, to actually see, because that's sometimes they just log in there and they don't you know, have to call or call me and try to figure out what's going on. It to me will be a really good um, thing to maybe get to that point so they can log in even when they mail out their statements so they can be accurate. And that's my update for tonight. Thank you.
Yes. <laughs> yeah. All, all of it. Yeah. Yeah. Been very busy. Oh, yeah. No thanks. I don't think we've ever had an HR presentation before, so this was this was great. I don't think me first. I don't think I necessarily knew the obstacles or the frequency with which we're like hiring or you know or staff is leaving and you have to maintain that information somehow. I never I never really thought about the work that goes into it. So it sounds like that was one of our obstacles and really like big time takeaways, I guess. You guys were spending or somebody was spending a lot of time on handling new applications and retirees and resignations. Yeah, I think the paper is an obstacle, but also just like the system being old. So like there's hiccups, like you download something and it's not there or like, for instance, I give you a, a real example for myself. When I applied, I did upload my new information, but it still held on to my older profile information. So there was like a whole letter that came through. So just like being able to like get rid of some of those roadblocks by updating it to 21st century technology, which they do offer, um, was I think the, um, some of the best feedback that I've gotten from my hiring managers as they learned. And so one of the things I've done is I've done online trainings, I've done in-person trainings, and I just let them know like you're not in this alone. Just because I trained you once doesn't mean you can't come back and we just like work through it as we all learn the system. I've been using it for the last six years, so I'm like well versed in it, but I understand that it takes time. So just being able to commit to that um, before like really jumping into the very the next big thing, but this has been huge, I think. Mm -hmm. two, uh, two other quick questions. One is the MTRS uh, reconciliation. So that's essentially to provide updated information in MTRS so that they can cap properly calculate current benefits to our staff. Is that why the reconciliation is necessary? So what happens is, is we um, we worked with the town and there's um, a report in our system where we pull like everything that um, are the deductions that we're taking out of our teachers' um, paychecks. Yeah. And so the reports that I'm sending over are is just that place. These are our teachers that we have. This is what their salaries are. This is what we pulled. And the reconciliation comes when there's like the um, if they got paid stipends, but we need to make sure that certain things that are um, pensionable, eligible, um, pension eligible, um, that those show up correctly. Um, they ask like questions, for instance, like if we process a retro, we have sometimes we do lane changes, and so if they if we're processing them a little later for various reasons because there's like a deadline that they have that's kind of close to like the first paycheck, and so if we process it after we do a retro payment. To them, MTRS wants to know why do they have extra money. So it's very tedious, and so that's what that reconciliation looks like. Yeah, seems, yeah. Um, okay, that's crazy. The MTRS needs all that. I feel like there should be a more efficient way for everyone to do that. But that's... well, their system is updated. They do yeah. have a new portal, so we're able to like push them through yeah. and they get them. It's just a matter of um, also working with them. So some of the things we've done is found out where those errors are coming from, so that we can build a better report that I'm pulling. So we have made some quick changes with that and put in the, um, in the um, presentation, but we changed some of the coding to try to cut down on those errors. So the time that we're spending within those meetings and recommendation is minimal to that. There's one more quick question. I love the, uh, the situ with internet options, but um, just for clarification, it's kind of a policy question, I guess, is um, those aren't jobs that are just available to our internal staff. It just happens if you are an internal staff member and you want to apply, it just gives that quicker way to do it. That is correct. So I I'll also spent time building um, an intentional external application that doesn't take two hours. So if you um, if you're more on your computer savvy side of it, it's about thirty minutes. If you if you're not, it's about an hour, depending on how like if you're able to load PDFs or whatnot. So everything that's posted externally has an internal link, but not all jobs are external. So like our club advisors are not things that are in the contract. So only those you'll see on the internal site, which they're like they have to like actually verify that they're an employee to get to that. Um, but that's kind of the difference. But yes, there's a full application. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Um, thank you so much for all the updates you've been doing. That seems like a lot of hard work. Oh, yeah, and well, hopefully, you will soon realize the fruit of it. Um, and I, I was glad you kind of brought up the you know, the work that you do. That's not that mundane stuff, but the work that's more linked to the strategic plan, the equity audit, all of that. Um, and I know that you said step one was this split one pager. Um, and I just, I don't expect you to be there yet, but I'm just saying I'm excited to at some point hear like kind of what you think is next. Um, and also I was, I was wondering if 
if we could see a lit one pager just out of curiosity because I think that's a really important step to include in the hiring process and I'm happy that people are seeing it. I'm just curious. I'd love to see it too. So the easier answer is yes, I can send that out. And so <laughs> it's a play on words. I don't know if you saw it said one, one. but in parentheses, so it's actually four pages. But okay. we use <laughs> one because we feel like we actually have one in doing this work. Um, no one is doing anything like us. Yeah. Um, and so I have no problem sharing that with you. I think the work is like, Jamila and I understanding like where we are. So we, we are meeting um, to find out like, you know, one, the first step was actually like getting those documents down. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, okay, how do we integrate that? And then join an MP, um, DE. Okay. So those are like those first steps of like really like understanding. And then I think the next steps are looking at, as you were aware, um, we, Jamila's tag team with me on initial um, hiring committees to come in and talk about lit and like what, just to remind the committees of like what we're looking to do as far as diversity, equity, and inclusion in our um, our hiring process. So that was the first step that we've implemented and we'll continue to grow from there. Thank you. You're welcome. Can you can you give an can you give an example of who your hiring managers are? I guess I thought you did everything. So. <laughs> I appreciate that though. Everyone now has part. So I when I say hiring manager, I am referring to anyone who has the autonomy to hire someone for their building. Okay. So that would be the principals. Okay. And then I know at the high school level, um, Mark has delegated to some of the department chairs to hire in their um, individual areas. So okay. when I say hiring manager, that's what I mean. Um Scott Payne as our athletic director is one of the hiring managers. Thanks. You're welcome. I have any questions, just I just love that the streamlining and the sensibility of it all is just exactly it's just very exciting to see, as Marie mentioned, sort of what comes next because you know it's just good to see all that and easier access for people to apply just means more applicants are able to access you know opportunity. So love it. Thank, Thank you so you. much. I appreciate yeah. your time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Paul, thank you, Ty. Um, I think it was uh, Mr. Gates' comment just that you haven't had an HR director. That was the school committee's idea. I don't know if you remember one of our earlier conversations. So mm -hmm. just want to let you know that. I want to yeah, check that one right. off in case you forget. But that, yeah, yeah. Check it off. So I, I do pay attention at these meetings and take good notes. And, um, <laughs> but I thank Ty for that. But I, I found it very helpful yeah. for you all to hear and get those yeah. questions answered, yeah. but also the, the community to know the, the magnitude of the position, but also improvements that we're making and plans that we have in the future. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. Yeah, especially since it came up so strongly through the equity audit too, just diversity, you know, seeing it linked together and, you know, the yeah. work that's being done, it's really nice because it does tie back to that strategic planning and yeah. 100% agree. Thank you. All right. Well, <laughs> made it to that point. Uh, we have some approval of minutes for tonight, March 25th and April 8th, which I was not in attendance on April 8th, so I will abstain. I make a motion to that the school committee vote to approve the March 25, March 25th, 2024 minutes. As Second. Presented. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. I make a motion that the school committee vote to approve the April 8th, 2024 minutes as presented. Second. Oops, sorry, I got excited. <laughs> Second by Dr. McCoskey. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I abstain. I have to abstain. You too? I also was. I also oh, yeah, you oh, yeah. 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 Two abstentions. Two abstentions. It's been like this yeah. yeah. All right. Yes. Uh, warrants? In here. Uh, correspondences, our invitation to the commencement, mm -hmm. and our folders. Fantastic, looking forward to it. Other business, anyone? I have, I have a question. Um, I am the school committee liaison to the Situate Education Foundation, and I was curious um, am I supposed to give updates on that to you all? Can I do that now, or mm -hmm. should I wait till that's Okay. Nope. Um, I would just say um, the Situate Education Foundation um, had a very successful um, 
Seaside Stories event on Saturday night. It was attended by about 300 people. It's one of their major fundraisers for the year. That's a um, and I think a couple of important points to note are that that group has been in existence for about five years. And we are That's one it. of several um, education foundations that exist. So we're in very good company. Marshfield, Duxbury, Hingham, Cohasa, Corlean, they all have them, we all have them. Um, and SEF has raised about $280,000 that has gone back in the situate um, since their inception. And um, they, the board is currently reviewing grants that have been submitted. Um, and I think one thing that's important to note about SEF that's a little bit different than say the PTOs are that the types of projects that they fund range from pre-K all the way through senior programming and Situate Public Schools is a frequent recipient mm -hmm. of SEF grants, um, but as is you know, Situate Town Library, Situate Senior Center, um, there's a, a number of organizations. And so um, I wasn't, yeah, that's kind of just what I've learned and what I wanted to share with everyone and make sure everyone kind of understands their role and how they're different from other um, organizations. But I personally really enjoyed getting involved and I thought that the community members that stood up and presented their stories were fantastic. It was, they did a great job presenting. Also, it's just a really generous thing for them to do. They spent a lot of time learning um, about the storytelling process, practicing, um, and at the end of the day, donated their time and talent um, so that um, SEF can make more money and give more grants. So great. I think that's that's about it, but I really enjoyed being involved in it. Well, thank you for the update. I think it's a, that's an important acknowledgement. We haven't done many um, subcommittee on updates lately. I don't know if there hasn't been a frequency of meetings for those, maybe, I don't know. Either. Please feel free to bring updates if anyone has them at any time. Um, similarly, we do have an update also from the policy subcommittee oh, yes. in that we reviewed the policy um, about life-threatening life allergies. <laughs> and we have a, an updated version that we should put on our agenda next meeting for our first reading. Mm -hmm. And then I think beyond that, um, we were going to take a look some of the technology policies. I'm actually so wondering if maybe now we want to wait until the person in this new role is hired, but that makes sense. Just, I don't want to be updating. I don't know. I just, if, if someone new comes in with expertise on the topic, it might be wise to wait. Well, I think you, I mean, um, we can look at it, but. Kelly Bell usually does the. So she did the life well, no, the life technology. But, but the technology. There's a lot of technology. Uh, technology. Okay. Like, okay. there's a lot. There's a lot. A lot. But there's probably some redundancy that we can sure get rid of is, and yeah. then look at them. What do you think's missing? No, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of extra stuff. Extra stuff. <laughs> oh, no. I don't think you need to wait for the person. We can okay. do that. Like do a cursory yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. speak. But as yeah. far as voting voting. Okay. I mean, okay. I feel like the the things that the building principals are doing, especially at Gates and the high school, would probably be some great partners in that work. Yeah, I'd be curious mm -hmm. to know what they came up with if, as they were going through policies. It's, yeah. it's just, it's like a maze. It's like a rat's nest of yeah, for documents. Sure. Yeah. And so it's kind of like, where do you start? And sometimes you don't start with something until you look at it and you're like, oh boy, this needs updating. Yeah. And so we're right. kind of just trying to learn what Ty was saying and get through some of that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's really important though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if we can put life threatening allergies on the next yeah. agenda, there you go. Let's do that. Anybody else? Okay. I have a quick update. So I didn't get to update you all on my trip to New Orleans yeah. or the National School Board Association where I represent Situate and practically the whole state of Massachusetts by myself. <laughs> <laughs> there was about five other people there. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. I, I think it was, um, it was a great opportunity to get a pulse for more of a sort of grasp on what's going on around the country beyond Massachusetts. And it, I mean, in our, we're very lucky, I would say, in our position here that um, lots of conversations about um, funding and lack of funding and um, just everything, buildings, technology, all of the same topics and challenges that we face here. But, um, you know, there was some large scale, certainly um, districts and more of a crisis mode, I would say, then um, fortunately, we are not in those shoes. So, um, but I did learn a lot as well, kind of overall. And I think it's something that we should all 
and fitter, um, you know, attending more conferences and really representing Situate out there. Mask asked me to present at the fall um, conference the same presentation. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Should be fun. But I just think it's good. It's best practices for us to keep current and engaged. So maybe we can date of the fall conference yet. So it, oh no, no, I thought you were going to say NSBA. It's funny because last year I felt like they really promoted New Orleans, yeah. but this year I didn't see as much connection to what's happening next with that. So we'd have to dig into it. But uh, fall is November, November. Yeah. yeah. I loved it last year. Yeah, actually, I learned so much. Yeah, um, yeah. And I, if anything, wish that we could have been there to divide and conquer mm -hmm. the sessions more because I often had a hard time choosing which session should I go to. Yep. Um, and so I feel like as soon as they do know the dates, I'd love to get it on our calendars. And I know maybe not everyone has to attend every day, but I thought it was great. Yeah. That's exactly how I felt about NSBA. It was, you know, it would have been better if we could divide and conquer and then reconvene and sort of, you know, that's what most districts were doing. They had multiple representatives from, you know, they, they had teams there. They had t-shirts and teams and it was, wow. a, yeah, okay. wow. lots of superintendents were there. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I have to look into it, but it would be great to go. All right. Uh, anything else before we take a motion to adjourn? Seeing nothing. All right. Motion to adjourn at 741. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye.